Hey Briefers, Aaron here from Aaron Dus and Think Oceania on Instagram. First and foremost, I want to thank uh, Richard and Reefs.com for asking me to do this little video for you today talking about my reef tank. So as you can see, uh, my reef tank has been a work in progress for about the last two years. Those of you who've been following me on Instagram have seen all the evolution that I've been doing. And those of you who are new to seeing me, welcome and thank you for, uh, for viewing. So I'm going to just take a quick moment to tell you a little bit about the system that I have. So I have a water box 130.4. So that's uh, over 130 gallons at approximately 4 feet by 2 feet by 2 feet. And you can see that's predominantly an SPS reef tank with some softies here and there. But you know, my real passion is being able to keep uh, all the hard corals alive. And uh, my overall philosophy on reefing is, is really this notion of smart reefing. And to me, what smart reefing is, is about paying attention to your aquarium, about really understanding the things that are at balance and imbalance within the system. You know, when, when a happy ecosystem, you have happy corals, happy fish. So a happy ecosystem is when everything is flourishing and looking good. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of the things that I have run in the tank to make it going. So to do that, I'm gonna de-baby proof the, the system. Okay, you can see that I'm lighting the tank with two of the Illumagic Blaze lights and two of the Vita Minis. Now, I have two in there, making sure that I have full coverage from the front to the back of the tank. Now, and you can see onto the bottom, I've gone to a bare bottom system. And that was important for me to be able to maximize water flow within the system. When I had sand in it, it was just too much water movement going back and forth. So I really wanted to focus on making sure that I had as much water flow randomly generating as possible. So about six months ago, I took off the sand and I found the system is overall much happier in that. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, the brains behind the operation here. So you'll see next to the aquarium, I've built a, uh, a stand and containment system and running all of that is the GHL Prophylux P4. Now as the brains of the system, it's running the KH director, as well as a number of different dosing pumps and heads that I have feeding the aquarium. And thanks to the touch screen, I'm able to very easily and quickly see all of the different things that are going on from temperature to pH, salinity, alkalinity, et cetera. In terms of the overall flow within the system, I have a L1 with four random flow generators in the tank. But in addition to that, I also have a couple power heads moving. So I have the JBO SLW20, two of those in the back, really just pushing water forward. And then I have a JBO W25 that really just pushes water across. So in different pulse modes on that, I'm able to get a really good set of movements throughout the system. Now, one of the things that you may see in looking at this is the cord management. Now, I'm a stickler for that. Some of you may know that I'm pretty OCD. So I spend a lot of time building the cabinet to allow all of the cords and wire management to be in the back. And I'm using uh, this Technical Pro power bar to be able to allow me to very easily and quickly get to all the pieces and components and turn them on and off as need be. So as I move down a little bit further, you can see that I have my dosing containers and bottles there. And I want to thank uh, Octo Aquatics for being able to build this for me. It's been super simple and convenient, and I really appreciate that. And below that, you'll see that I have my Pax Bellum LG reactor. Now this allows me to very easily and quickly get to it next to the aquarium as opposed to in my sump, which you'll see in a moment, is pretty crowded. So behind that, you'll see that I have uh, an Arctic chiller. So I, I tend to run my aquarium right around 75 degrees. So between the chiller and the GHL breeze fan, I'm able to work together to keep that going. So this is really the heartbeat of the system. So you can see on the left side of the sump, I have my Pacific Sun uh, Kelp Feeder AC1, and that's being fed and powered by the carbon doser. So I get roughly a bubble every seven seconds. Now what's unique about this particular uh, calcium reactor is it's a continuous saturated system. So unlike a lot of the American brands, this Polish brand allows me to have a fully saturated solution at a little bit lower pH, but a much more concentrated. So you may be wondering what I have run in this. It doesn't look like coral pieces. Well, it's not. It's actually a marble, a Carrera marble, because it's so pure that I'm able to get all of the different uh, alkalinity and calcium coming right out of it. And it lasts significantly longer than the coral frags. But the downside of that is, being that the pH is a little bit lower, I have to use a degassing chamber 
And in fact, I have two of them running around there. So the first of it is a Pacific Sun degassing chamber, and that's filled with the two little fishies, Reborn Coarse Media. And then I have the Aquamax Media Chamber, and that's filled with a combination of aragonite chips, magnesium chips, and some Reborn in there as well. So as that begins to dissolve, I'm able to buffer the pH to be a little bit closer to that eight. It's roughly 7.9. And then what I have is the effluent of that going into the pax bellum so that the chato in there is able to absorb all of that extra CO2. So by the time it gets into the aquarium, I'm right around an eight. All right, moving to the other side of the aquarium, you'll see a lot of stickers. So yes, I want to thank all of the friends in the community that help make reefing what it is. Without you guys and sharing of information, we would really be islands here. So I want to thank all of my friends, the supporters, the sponsors who helped make and bring this tank to life. So thank you so much for that. So as we look to the right side, you can see, the, again, the heartbeat of the system. So from a skimmer perspective, I'm running the Delua Great White 12. Now this is a deep sea pump. You guys may know these guys out of Australia. They've done a fantastic job being able to come into the US market and really be leaders in the skimmer technology space. So this DC-12 has done a fantastic job pulling in a lot of skimmate. So next to the skimmer you'll see I have the Avast Marine Works, the K1 Kalkwasser. And again, I just set this up uh, about a week ago, so fully getting it done, worked out, etc. But uh, that's being powered by the Versa. So it's, you can see in the plumbing job here, I have it going from my auto top up, through the Versa, up and around and into the kelp stirrer. So it's done a fantastic job so far. I've been super happy with that. It's been able to bring up my pH to roughly 8.3, 8.4. And in that I've seen over the last week or so, tremendous and new growth and poly of extension for this added pH. So you'll see next to the Versa, we have the e-coral doser. So this is a relatively new addition to the system as well. But what I wanted to do in addition to the GHL is to have more components to be able to dose smaller amounts of specific things. So with the E-Coral, I'm running my Aquaforest uh, components A, B, and C here. And this has done a great job of being able to really provide the, uh, the trace elements needed for the aquarium. So I, so I have them going on a daily basis. So a lot of you may be asking, what am I dosing on a daily basis? So obviously, I'm dosing the Aquaforest components A, B, C on a daily basis. I'm also dosing the Tropic Marin K plus and A minus. I just find that that combination gives me the maximum spread of all of the macro and micro trace elements. I'm also dosing a little bit of the Aquaforest, uh, the Nitro Phos Minus. I got a couple mil dosing into that and that just helps to keep an overall balance in the system. Now every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'm dosing the Aquaforest Amino Mix, Vitality, Build and Energy. Now I do these in the evening when the lights are off. I turn off the skimmer and I slow down the pumps and I just allow the tank to absorb this for, you know, for roughly an hour to two hours and then I really see the polyp extension forming, feeding, feeding, feeding. So it's a beautiful thing to watch. Now from a food source perspective, I'm feeding the Benepets Reef Food. And I find this is a fantastic uh, overall reef food because it doesn't spike my phosphate levels, but I'm able to feed the corals, feed the fish, and feed the, the beneficial bacteria in the aquarium. So I think that's done a fantastic job. Now on a weekly basis, I'm doing a 15% water change with the Aquaforest Reef Salt, uh, and also I'm adding in to that the Aquaforest Life Source Mud. And I find that that gives a little bit extra balance in there. Yes, it does make the tank a little bit cloudy for a couple hours, so I do it at night. By the time I wake up in the morning, it's crystal clear and I see the tank looking really, really fantastic. Now from a fish perspective, you guys know and you see me post a lot about my keystone fish, which is the Moorish Idol. She's been a champion of the tank. Uh, what many of you don't know is she only has one eye. So you often see her swimming sideways, sometimes upside down. And this is really just to help navigate the aquarium. In addition to that, I have uh, the Red Sea Regal. And I've had her since uh, she was a juvenile and she's now uh, forming a full-fledged adult. And she's a beautiful fish for the aquarium. In addition to that, I have four female antheas, a copper band butterfly, one yellow-eyed coal tang, a lawnmower blenny, six line wrasse, mandarin, and one of the biota file fish, which helps take care of any of the abstasias that are growing in the aquarium. From an invert perspective in crustaceans, I have two blood shrimp, 
four peppermint shrimp, two harlequin shrimp, a bunch of uh, red and blue legged hermit crabs, and a whole slew of other tiny snails that are really just going through helping to keep the aquarium at bay and doing a fantastic job at that. All right, once again, I want to thank uh, Richard and Reefs.com for taking the time to do this video today. I hope you enjoyed my aquarium. If you did, come follow me at Aaron Dust on Instagram and think Oceania. Thanks a lot.